your Barbados Today Morning News update for Wednesday, November the 21st. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, industrial action is looming large over the state-owned Rural Development Commission. General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Senator Tony Moore, said late last night that if the RDC did not correct what the union described as a breach of an agreement on the last in first out policy, the BWU's Executive Council, which is meeting this evening, would sanction industrial action. Uh, we would hope that common sense and good judgment would dictate that they correct their position so that further action would not have to be contemplated by the Executive Council of the Barbados Workers' Union. Meanwhile, the union and the Barbados Water Authority have reached agreement on a salary hike and how outstanding merit increments would be paid. We've reached agreement on the 5% increase being applied to staff of the Water Authority. There was agreement reached two years ago on merit increments that were owed to staff. However, the implementation of those still had to be finalized, especially at a time where the government's position has been, the management of the Water Authority's position has been that it cannot afford pay out a payout of any large sum of money in cash. So we have been working through the rudiments of how the agreement would be met. And I think that it is pretty safe to say following our discussions that we have a clear position on that. And in related news, legal action against government is now on the cars as vendors outside the Granny Adams Memorial Secondary School explore their options in the fight to ply their trade. Just before 1 p.m. on Tuesday, outspoken attorney Douglas Trotman emerged outside the school to speak with the two vendors who have continued to sell their offerings despite new restrictions that prevent them from serving students during school hours. Although he did not make a public statement about the ongoing impasse, Trotman confirmed that he would be taking up the vendor's plight and was confident that he had a strong case. Government says it's ready to roll out its plan to collect the value-added tax or VAT on foreign online transactions by mid-next month. Yesterday, Prime Minister Mia Motley announced that the mechanism for the tax collection is now in place and government is targeting its introduction by December the 15th. The taxes paid will be automatically recorded in your receipt and there will be no double taxation by the government of Barbados at the port of entry once you can show a receipt that taxes have already been paid online. We have now to target a December 15th start instead of a December 1st start, as we have now completed the procurement of the entity to provide the services to the Barbados Revenue Authority. But the relevant legislative amendment for delegation to that entity to collect the tax has now to be introduced to Parliament and will be done so very shortly. An investment specialist is warning Barbados not to expect any major economic growth over the next three years. Chief Investment Officer of Fortress Fund Manager Peter Arinder said Barbados should not expect much growth over the next three years in light of the current restructuring exercise. However, he is predicting that after the four-year International Monetary Fund backed Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Program, the country should be on a better trajectory. With the things that are going on now, um, the structural changes, the adjustments, those are for the sake of the growth that's going to come three years plus down the road. We've got a couple of years of, of, uh, of what I would call fairly um, um, flat economic growth. Having said that, that should be no surprise to Barbadians. We've had that for the last number of years. So I would say, you know, we've now got the additional some of the stresses that are going along with the, the fiscal adjustment from the government um, and the recent debt restructuring. But uh, uh, really, I think the economic, the day-to-day -day economy here um, is unlikely to be much different in the next couple of years. But hopefully, in a number of years down the road, we'll be uh, on a better trajectory because of the structural changes that are, that are happening now.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. A 66-year-old man is hospitalized under police guard in Trinidad after he allegedly stole a bus, went on a wild ride that left a trail of destruction behind. More in this TV6 News report. According to a TTPS statement, the bus was stolen early Monday morning from PTSC's Chagona's compound. Police say while driven by the thief, the bus hit and damaged a number of vehicles. And when police tried to stop the bus, the suspect allegedly tried to hit police vehicles and run over officers. The bus eventually crashed into a woman's Chagona's home, leaving the 39-year-old woman seriously injured and hospitalized. And on the international scene, British charity Save the Children says that an estimated 85,000 children under the age of five may have died from extreme hunger or disease since the war in Yemen escalated more than three years ago. We pick up the story in the CNN report. By now, it has become an all too common sight. A young child starving slowly to death yet another victim of Yemen's ugly civil war. For three years, the world has watched impotently as the war has dragged on. The conflict, which pits a Saudi-led coalition backed by the UK and US against Iran-backed Houthi rebels, has brought 14 million people to the brink of famine, according to the UN. Saudi airstrikes have claimed the lives of thousands of civilians. In August, dozens of children were killed when their school bus was hit. The bomb that killed those kids was American, a laser-guided 500-pound munition designed by Lockheed Martin, sold to Saudi Arabia by the U.S. under a lucrative weapons deal. But patience with Saudi Arabia's war may finally be wearing thin as disenchantment grows with the conflict's architect, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Following the brutal murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, there have been growing cries in the U.S. Congress to hold the Crown Prince responsible. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.